SpaceX is still treating Starship like its own personal popsicle. We've got a slew of Crew Dragon missions coming our way. Elon accepts his patriotic duty to meddle in foreign wars. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Starship Super Heavy 420 cryo testing kicked back off this week on Tuesday evening, filling the booster's tank up almost to the brim with liquid nitrogen, then recommencing on Thursday afternoon with a cryo test of Starship 20. More launch complex activity is expected through next week. Be sure to keep an eye on Lab Padre's channel for 24 hour live coverage. Meanwhile, up Highway 4 at Starbase, Starship Gazer is keeping an eye on the ships currently in progress. Pictured here is 24's nose cone being assembled in one of the tents. The manufacturing process must be just about up to Elon's standards because soon all the large production tents will be replaced by a new 60 foot tall, 300,000 plus square foot building to streamline the assembly line. RGV aerial photography providing a bird's eye view of its foundation. But also of SpaceX's oil rig Deimos leaving the port of Brownsville earlier this week to join its sister, Phobos, in South Mississippi for future renovation. Elon stated during last month's Starship update that one of their two C platforms will be outfitted with a launch tower this year. Uh, we, we, we got these uh, two converted oil rigs that are, that are going to be turned into orbital uh, launch sites. On Tuesday, I had the privilege of chatting with Polaris Dawn pilot Scott Poteet, and so I asked if piloting the first manned starship would be of interest to him. Anything with wings and that can produce thrust, um, you know, I'm all about it. I'll, right. I'll jump in and learn how to fly that thing. Yeah. Um, who knows? Uh, we'll see. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not some young pup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if it's a, a couple years away, you know, I'll put my name in the hat. During our interview, Scott spoke at length about the Polaris Dawn mission, which of course included the EVA and new SpaceX EVA spacesuits. We were there a couple weeks ago, and I'm going back uh, at the end of this week to take a look and start getting measured for my suit, which is nice. very exciting. Yeah. Um, you can check out our entire interview using the link below. 2022 is expected to be a busy year for Dragon and Falcon 9. On February 28th, NASA held a media briefing for Axe 1, the first commercial mission to the space station through Axiom Space. Progress is looking nominal as they work up to their March 30th launch date. Down at the Cape, we have our uh, uh, Falcon 9 rocket and also our Dragon spacecraft um, are coming along well. They are on track for being ready to launch here um, in about a month. NASA is also preparing for their next crewed mission to the ISS, Crew 4, which is targeting no earlier than Friday, April 15th for liftoff. Then following a crew handover period, Crew 3 will return to Earth for splashdown aboard Endurance. The agency recently announced they awarded SpaceX three additional Crew Dragon flights to the space station through March of 2028, as if there wasn't any alternative. These missions will include Crew 7, 8, and 9, bringing the total contract value to $3,490,872,904.00. Plus tax, pay your fair share, NASA. How many cosmonauts do you think will be riding on these broomsticks? If you haven't heard, our relationship with Russia is currently, shall I say, on the rocks. I know, hard to believe, right? Who would have guessed that the space industry could be affected by political incompetence? Woke space nerds told us that we live in a world without borders. Shocker, that's not how the real world works. But NASA, not the military. There's no place for politics in space, okay? The Russians are Go! Maybe they just meant politics that they disagree with. That is, how the left likes their science after all, void of any dissenting opinions. Wee, I'm unsubscribing. Fine, get out of here. You know, I've got to say, the strategy of being willfully ignorant of politics and reality, and yet still taking the time to vote senility into office, is working out so well. Now that Biden has decided to get tough on Russia after they invaded Ukraine by using sanctions, Putin feels he has no choice but to fight even harder, while Roscosmos is wondering who will keep the International Space Station from falling out of the sky. In Soviet Russia, Space Station come to you. Elon responding, yet. SpaceX's flying broomsticks will take it from here. Elon has also answered the call to keep Ukraine connected during the Russian invasion, delivering a truckload of Starlink terminals eastward. They arrived just a couple days later, but are subject to attack now that they are the only non-Russian means of communicating still operational in Ukraine. So use only when needed with caution and place the antenna as far away from people as possible. Camouflaging it may not be a bad idea either. On Thursday, 47 more Starlink satellites were delivered to space on a Falcon 9 rocket, launching from pad 39A.
This was the third time a booster was flown for a record-tying 11th mission, and was the ninth mission in nine weeks. The booster landed on the drone ship just to read the instructions. All stats were confirmed successfully deployed about an hour later. At this time, the next Starlink mission is scheduled for March 8th. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. This week, Rocket Lab launched an Electron rocket for the first time from Pad B at their New Zealand Launch Complex 1 site. The mission, titled The Owl's Night Continues, added a strict satellite to the Synspective Synthetic Aperture Radar Constellation. And while Rocket Lab did not attempt to recover Electron's booster, they are continuing to test systems associated with recovery, including enhanced batteries to boost performance of the second stage to offset any mass associated with the first stage recovery systems. The company also announced that they have selected Wallops Island, Virginia as a location to build and fly their reusable neutron rocket. Expected to create as many as 250 jobs in the state, the facility is estimated to be 250,000 square feet in size and will include a launch control center. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to those of you supporting the show. Check out our Locals community if you wish to do the same. And have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.